Hey everyone, I'm Flo, and Dude is right here, not behind the camera. In front of the camera. <laughs> Can you believe that we are already at the end of 2022? We've been doing this for five years. Can you believe that? Five years now. And this year, we brought you almost 50 recipes, and we wanted to share with you our top four. You're so distracting. Oh my goodness. There she goes. <laughs> this year, we experienced some pretty crazy price increases at our grocery market, as I'm sure all of you have experienced the same. So this year, we tried to create recipes that would help you save some money and also eat well. But before we get into the recipes, we want to take a moment to talk about what simple faith means to us. But if you're not interested, Cool. Please skip ahead to the videos and we wish you all a happy new year. If you didn't know, we are Christians. We follow Jesus and believe that he is the son of God and that he died for our sins. Our simple faith rests in our purpose and identity in Jesus. And that flows into everything and anything we do, whether it be in life or on the channel, bringing you recipes every week and sharing just a little bit about our lives in those videos. We didn't wake up one day thinking that we're gonna become YouTubers. Hey, we're in our 50s, none of this makes sense. We believe that God has called us to this work that we do on the channel. We believe that everything that we have comes from Him, and we believe that He has given us a purpose in life, which is to glorify Him. So, in everything that we do, we ask the question, are we glorifying God? And if not, then don't do it. And that's it. That's how we live out our simple faith in our everyday life. Thank you so much for tuning in. We so greatly appreciate your encouragement and support for the channel. What we would like to ask you is, what recipes would you like to see in 2023? Let us know in the comments below, and we are wishing you all a blessed new year. Here are our top four videos for 2022. I have four boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I am adding about two teaspoons of soy sauce just to season it a little bit. And that's it. I'm just gonna add some flavor to it, set it aside, and get the rest of my ingredients ready to go. And I have a, a small thumb size piece of ginger that I'm just going to smash. Because I just want the flavor from it. You can slice it up if you want to, it's totally up to you. But this way I can just dig it out of the soup. I also have two cloves of garlic that I'm going to mince. You can put it through a garlic press if you want. I'm just gonna chop it up. Since I want that chicken to marinate just a little bit, I have a little bit of time. I also have two stalks of green onion that I'm just gonna chop. I need two eggs. I'm just going to beat them. My chopsticks. And just set that aside. And about a tablespoon of cornstarch. Adding about a tablespoon or two of water. Remember it has to be cold or room temperature water, otherwise it won't dissolve and instead clump up and you don't want it to clump up. I'm just gonna prepare this in advance and this will be used to thicken the soup. I'm gonna turn on my stove. Set it to medium high. I'm using my cast iron uh, Dutch oven today, adding about two tablespoons of cooking oil. I'm using corn oil today. I'm gonna add my ginger, because I wanna flavor up the oil a little bit. Just let that cook for a little bit. And of course I was impatient. Oh, no, it's starting to sizzle. All right, you see the ginger is sizzling now. I'm just going to push it to the side while I add my chicken. Okay, we're going to 
to cook it for about three to four minutes on each side until the chicken is completely cooked through. And if you want to have like a vegetarian style, you don't have to use the chicken at all. You can just omit the whole chicken part and even use a uh, vegetable broth instead of chicken broth. And you'll still have a really yummy egg drop soup. I'm gonna flip them over. I'm just gonna take them out. Okay, I turned off the heat, so now I'm gonna turn it back on to low, just to get my garlic going. Just cook that for about 30 seconds until it's fragrant. Okay, then we're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. I still have my ginger floating around in there. That's okay, because we want the flavor from the ginger and the added flavor from all of the browning of the chicken. Okay, we want to scrape up all the brown bits at the bottom. And then we're gonna bump this heat up to uh, medium, just to get it to boil while I cut up the chicken. So the chicken, I'm just gonna cut up into, well, however you want to cut it up is fine. I'm gonna cut it up into strips and then into cubes. Oh, it looks so juicy. It looks yummy, it smells yummy. And that's with the, the simplest marinade. <laughs> I just wanted some flavor in the chicken. A little bit of chicken goes a long way I to know. Uh, Look at that. feed a lot more people. Then that makes the soup a, a full meal as opposed to just a soup on the side. But once the soup is boiling, I'm going to add two cups of corn. So normally I would add one cup of corn and a can of cream style corn. But I realized today that when I went to buy the the can that read the ingredients in it. All it is is corn and cornstarch and sugar. So I don't need that. Okay, adding two teaspoons of soy sauce. I'm just gonna bring this back up to a simmer. Okay, once it starts to simmer, I'm gonna turn it down to a low so that it's still simmering, I'm adding my cornstarch slurry to thicken the soup. And remember, that can of cream style corn had cornstarch in it. So you're just adding it yourself instead of relying on the can. And if you wanted to, at this point, you can put in an immersion blender and just blend some of it so that you get that kind of creamy uh, corn feel, I guess. Okay, now we're drizzling in our egg and we're just going to kind of cause ribbons. So add it slowly, don't dump it all in one place. Look at that, looks so good. Okay, still on low, adding our chicken back in and all the drippings as well. And the green onions. Add a stir. All right, you can turn off the heat at this point. Okay, I'm gonna remove that ginger, remember. And a couple last things about, I don't know, a quarter teaspoon of ground white pepper. Unless you want it to bring the heat. Yep, you can add as little or as much as you want. And how about a drizzle of sesame oil? Mm, yum. All right.
going to start with the sauce. I'm using a three tablespoons of ketchup mayonnaise. And this is a dark sweet soy sauce. It's almost molasses-like. If you don't have this, you could substitute with uh, equal parts of soy sauce and brown sugar. This is a unique product called ketchup mayonnaise, but here it's marketed as sweet soy sauce, but it is the exact same thing. I do a lot of Southeast Asian cooking now, so I like to have a bottle of this in my fridge. And it's, it does taste different than using just like dark soy with brown sugar or um, regular soy with brown sugar, but you can make your own. I'm also adding two tablespoons of regular soy or light soy. One tablespoon of oyster sauce. two tablespoons of ketchup. It's what adds the tang. And one teaspoon of a sambal. And sambal is a uh, chili paste. I'm not gonna, maybe, I'll, is that enough? I think you should ease up on it, yeah. Because <laughs> the kids are gonna. All right, I will use half a teaspoon, but you can use a teaspoon or more depending on your level of tolerance to spiciness and heat. And if you don't want any spice, just omit it. You don't have to have spice if you don't like it. We're just gonna mix it all together and set it aside. What I really want to do is also add a teaspoon of a shrimp paste, but Shrimp paste, I'm trying to keep it simple for you guys. So shrimp paste is a super concentrated, I don't know what, I don't know what it is, made out of shrimp. But you just need a little bit of it to add like that extra depth of flavor, like an umami to your dish. But I know that it's not easily found, so we're gonna keep it simple for you guys today. Also using two shallots. I'm just gonna slice it up. Oops. Still have your finger? <laughs> yes. It was just a piece of shallot that rolled off the edge. All right, that looks good enough. Two stalks of a green onion that I'm just gonna cut on the diagonal. And you can cut them however you like. You can leave them in long pieces if you like. But I'm gonna separate the light green from the dark green. And I'm gonna add that in the cooking part of it and the dark green I'm going to use as garnish. I'm also using three stalks of Chinese greens and this one is called choy sum or yu choy. And I'm just going to slice it up. You can use bok choy in here or even cabbage Texture-wise, you can also keep them in long lengths if you want, instead of chopping it up like this. It's all up to you what you like your mouthfeel to be like. And we have about three ounces of bean sprouts. It's just about a handful. No secret measurement. I also have two eggs that I'm going to lightly beat. Whoa, look at how big that yolk is. I have about five to six ounces of a shrimp that's already been deshelled and deveined. And uh, these are probably 31 to 40 size. And I just grabbed enough for three shrimp per person. I also have about five to six ounces of chicken that I've cut up into bite-sized pieces. And I used one thigh and a drumstick you can probably use a whole breast if you wanted to use chicken breast. And if you don't want chicken, you can use pork or tofu. It's really, really flexible. Okay, I'm using my wok today. I'm gonna turn it on to medium heat. If you don't have a wok, you can use a large frying pan. I'm doing the eggs first, and because I can heat up my wok and it's well seasoned, I know my egg is not going to stick. If you have a non-stick frying pan, that might be a good option for you. The wok is heated when you see that wisp of smoke. I'm adding about a tablespoon 
of oil, cooking oil. I'm using corn oil today, and I'm gonna add my egg. I want to make a thin pancake so that I can cut it up. I'm just going to push the uncooked eggs out to the side so I don't have to flip it. Or you can do this in two separate batches. So you end up with two egg crepes, I guess. AKA thin omelet. Yes. Okay, just gonna turn off my heat. And I'm just gonna roll it up in my wok. And try to lift it up. that on my cutting board and we're just going to slice that up into little ribbons and if you don't want to do it like this you can totally just scramble your eggs but this just adds to the mouth feel of little egg ribbons turning my walk back on medium heat Adding a tablespoon of cooking oil and adding my shallots. Okay, adding my garlic. You just want your shallots to be um, cooked through, slightly brown. Garlic, you only want to cook for about 30 seconds until you start to smell it. You don't want the garlic to burn. Okay, I'm adding our chicken. And we want to cook this chicken through. Once the chicken is mostly cooked through, you can push them aside and add the shrimp. This will only take about a minute or two to cook through. Oh, look at that beautiful color. Mm -hmm. I'm using this yellow egg noodle and you can use like instant noodles even if you want. This is fresh already cooked noodles. If you're using instant noodles, you can um, pre-cook them, like boil them first before adding them. All right, we're adding the rest of our ingredients. So the, um, Chinese veggies and the white to light green parts of the green onion, bean sprouts, egg, and our beautiful sauce. And this is why you need a wok, people. The amount of noodles I used was about a pound and a quarter. That smells amazing, dude. Yeah, it does. And you just wanna cook this until everything is heated through, that everything is combined really well, that all the noodles are covered in the sauce. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to dig in. I wish you guys could smell this. And before I forget, let's add a drizzle of sesame oil and some green onions. That plate's gonna get heavy real fast. Yeah, I think so. That's only half of it. 
Can you imagine, you guys, this is less than 10 bucks, and this will feed my family of four. even with the regular price of food today. Usually it comes in a vacuum sealed pack like this, often found in the freezer section, and sometimes they do sell it fresh as well, but it'll still be packaged this same way. All right, so they're called finger meat because they look like long fingers, I guess, but really they're just like that part of the cow in between the ribs. I don't know if it's called anything else. You can Google it. Just Google beef finger meat and you'll learn so much about finger meat that you never knew you needed to know. I'm using about three and a half pounds here because that's how much that comes in this package. And I'm gonna cut these into about two inch pieces and I'm gonna parboil them before putting them into the main dish. Actually, it's very much like brisket, but brisket is so much more expensive. Even sometimes ground beef I find expensive. So this was $6.88 per pound on sale. Usually it runs about $10 to $11 per pound, I think. I won't buy it at that price, but I will buy it at $6.88 a pound. So one thing about this cut is that it does require slow and slow, or in this case, we're gonna do it in the pressure cooker so that we can break down the meat. So it's kind of like a stew meat or a short rib that takes a long time of either braising or, or cooking for a long period of time to soften the meat. It's not like a steak. Don't use it in a stir fry. So for this recipe, you'll want about three pounds and I have three and a half pounds doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use all three and a half and I'm going to parboil it right now to remove some of the impurities and I'll be right back. We're gonna parboil it for five minutes. While the meat is parboiling, we have five minutes to prepare the other ingredients and I have three stalks of green onions. I'm going to use the white part in the soup. So I'm just gonna leave those lengths like this. It's going in the soup and the rest of it I'm going to chop up and use as garnish at the end. Also using one onion, I'm going to cut into eighths. Three pieces of garlic, smashed. The, I did better that time than I did with the mallet in the last video. Did you all see that one? But it's so much more satisfying with the mallet. A huge thumb sized piece of ginger. <laughs> it's about an ounce. I'm just gonna smash that as well. It'll split into two, smash it further down, get more flavor out of it. Also using two dry chilies to spice things up. You can omit these if you don't want it spicy, or you can add more depending on how much heat you would like. All right, we're using our instant pot today. I'm gonna hit saute and leave it on normal instead of adjusting it too high, which I often do because I'm impatient. All right, adding a tablespoon of vegetable oil or whatever oil you're using and adding my ginger and garlic and chilies. Just cook that for a couple of seconds, I guess. You start to smell the aroma of the ginger and the garlic, you can even Smell the chilies in there. We're adding the onions and the white parts of the green onion. I'm gonna cook that for about two to three minutes until the onion starts to become a little bit more translucent. Okay. Just gonna turn off the saute mode now. I'm gonna add our beef. So this is the parboiled beef. It's already cooked. Well, 
not totally cooked, but you know what I mean. I rinsed the beef under the tap just to remove any more of the debris from the meat. And it really does give a cleaner tasting broth. And if you decide that you don't want to parboil, you could just make the recipe as is, but just note that there will be a lot more scum and stuff that floats to the top. Totally up to you. Now for the sauces. I'm using two tablespoons of tomato paste. And you can check out my video on what to do with the remaining tomato paste, how to freeze it so that you can use it in future recipes. Using three tablespoons of a broad bean paste. And this broad bean paste can be bought um, either spicy or regular flavored. This is regular because you know us, we can't handle the spiciness. So three tablespoons, I'm just estimating here. as per usual. This broad bean paste can also be used in a whole lot of different other recipes. So if you buy a jar of this and you follow my channel, I'll be using this more so that you can check it out, more recipes using it. All right, I'm using a measuring cup to measure the rest because I need a quarter cup. Quarter cup of Shaoxing wine. And Shaoxing wine is a rice wine. It adds flavor, that's what it does. Someone recently asked, why do you even use rice wine? Kind of like using a wine in a risotto or a wine in a glaze or gravy. It just adds a depth of flavor that you wouldn't get otherwise. If you don't want to use the wine, you can just add more soy sauce because it does have some salt content in the wine. And, or you can use a, a dry sherry or we've been known to use bourbon in the past. Or even if you just want to use a white wine, you can do that as well. But if you want to eliminate it, don't bother using it at all. A quarter cup of dark soy sauce. And dark soy sauce will add color. It's not as salty as regular soy sauce. But if you didn't have dark soy, you can use regular soy sauce. And a quarter cup of regular soy sauce. That is going in. And we're gonna give that a stir. It may seem like a lot, but remember we have three and a half pounds of meat in here. And then we're going to add water because we're making a soup, a broth. By the way, I'm only using a six quart Instant Pot today. It will all fit in here. Using about a tablespoon of a rock sugar and ancient Chinese secret, I don't know if it's true, but apparently rock sugar will make your meat more tender. It also adds some sweetness to balance out the flavors. I'm just throwing that in there. Then I have my whole spices that I'm gonna put in this disposable tea bag, if I can get it open. So I don't have to go digging for them. Uh, one cinnamon stick, two star anise, and it's the star anise that I don't want to go digging for because if this breaks up in the soup, you're going to have these little pods, little seeds, and if you bite into them because you've missed one or two, it's not a very good feeling. Nor taste, especially. <laughs> and two bay leaves. Also adding about a quarter teaspoon of a five spice powder just into the, into the tea bag as well. And about a teaspoon of the Sichuan pepper. And if you have Szechuan peppercorn, that would be good to use as well, but this is all I have. So I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of this. Also putting that in the bag. And if you like your spices floating around in your soup, do that, you don't have to listen to me. That will, I'm just gonna drop that into the middle. Then adding about six cups of water. You want there to be just enough water that will cover the ingredients. Okay, that's probably about five cups. Add a little bit more. 
putting on the lid, locking it into place, making sure the sealing knob is on a ceiling. And we're going to pressure cook it on high for 45 minutes. And if you don't have an Instant Pot, you can do this same recipe on the stovetop. Do exactly the same thing up to this point, and then you're going to want to bring it to a boil and turn the heat down to simmer and let it sit on the stove for about three hours to get the same tenderness. We finished cooking, 45 minutes on high pressure, and I let it natural release for 15 minutes because when I'm making soup in the Instant Pot, I always find that if I, maybe I've filled it up too much, if I release it right away, all that pressure will like kind of spew out the top. I've had my messes. So I always let it sit for 15 minutes before I open it up and it smells so good, you guys. Yep, and if you notice, there isn't that scum that you would see if I had not parboiled the meat around the sides. But there is a lot of fat in here, so I'm gonna skim some of the fat and remove it. A little fat is good, too much fat is not good. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna remove the bag of spices. It looks like it stayed intact. Right, isn't that better than like having to fish out all the things? While the pressure was naturally releasing, I got my noodles and my vegetables ready to go. These were three to five minutes in boiling water, and I just made them according to the package. And then I threw in the bok choy, about a minute or two left of the cooking of the noodles, but you can do them separately if you'd like. And I'm using these fresh noodles. They're actually Korean, but they're a wheat noodle, and a wheat noodle goes really well with this dish. I'm spooning some meat in. See at home, you can have as much meat as you want. Do you know that a bowl of noodles like this will cost you about $16 out there? This pot of soup can feed about eight. So you do the math. It only cost me $34 for the meat and the bok choy and the noodles. And then of course all the other spices and uh, herbs and sauces I already had at home. So when you have all of the ingredients ready to go, it's not gonna cost you much at all. I found small packages of the pot herb mustard. It's a pickled mustard, it's a little bit salty, and it works really well in this dish. So I'm going to open this little package up and we're just gonna add a little bit to the soup. In fact, I'm just gonna put it in a bowl and people can spoon as little or as much as they want into it. This package is ready to go. Um, I have a recipe using this for a different recipe, but I did rinse it. But this one, I think you can just serve it as a condiment. And if you don't have this, you don't have to use it at all. The soup is gonna be super tasty just as it is. Okay, and then we're gonna add some green onions and cilantro. And again, if you don't want or don't like cilantro, you don't have to use it. Totally up to you. And there you go. Starting with a pound of a shrimp, I am using the size 21 to 25 size, which are quite big. The ones that you get at the shrimp trucks are uh, much smaller, so you get quite a few of them on your on your dish. But these ones are also uh, deshelled and the veins have been removed. And I am choosing to use these ones instead of the shell on because, well, Dude and I are fairly lazy eaters and we don't really enjoy all of the peeling of the shrimp while we're eating. So I would rather peel them when they're raw or just buy them like this. I have also washed and rinsed and uh, pat dry all the shrimp and you want them to be very dry so that they will fry nicely in your pan and not start to steam. I'm gonna get my garlic prepped first and I am going to use the whole entire bulb. Ooh wee. <laughs> That's why. Actually this recipe is very similar to um, the garlic shrimp 
part of the garlic shrimp fried rice that I make, but I don't use as much garlic. And this will probably be the hardest part of the whole entire recipe, peeling this garlic. No, there's only six cloves, but you really do need the whole bulb, but these cloves are fairly big. I'm just gonna remove these, the skin off this as well. And I'm going to use a, a chopper because, well, there's a lot to chop up and you could do it by hand if you like. Um, I don't, I'm choosing not to use a garlic press because the pieces of garlic uh, in the shrimp plates that we had were quite, um, weren't super minced, but they were minced, chopped. All right, splits this up. Okay, now wasn't that so much easier than just chopping it up? For the can't be bothered crowd. <laughs> there you go. If you want the pieces to be smaller, you can definitely chop it up even more. We're going to lightly coat the shrimp so that it can hold all the garlicky butter around the shrimp so that it doesn't just slip off like you would expect because it's oily. I'm using two tablespoons of mochiko flour. And mochiko flour is a sweet rice flour. If you don't have this uh, or you don't wanna purchase this, you can use a cornstarch or a potato starch. You just want a light coating on it. And it's, I, I wanna say it's finer than flour, but maybe it's not. Maybe flour is also a good substitute. And I'm using a tablespoon of hot paprika. I'm using hot paprika because that's what I have, but if you're using sweet paprika, you may want to spice it up a little bit by adding half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I'm just gonna stir this up. Fairly simple, there's not a lot going on, but just adds so much flavor. Well, the garlic actually adds all the flavor. Heating up my cast iron pan on Medium low. Okay, I'm going to melt a quarter cup of butter. You do want it on a fairly low heat so that the garlic doesn't burn. All right, you hear that sizzling? Now throw, get our garlic in there. And we're gonna cook the garlic for about two to three minutes. You know, I bet you they chop up their garlic with a chopper. The pieces looked exactly like this. All right, remember guys, don't burn the garlic because once you burn the garlic, it'll change the flavor completely. You just want the garlic to be toasty. And you can see that it's starting to become a golden brown color and it's starting to stick at the bottom. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. I'm gonna turn off my heat. I'm actually going to pour this into a bowl. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to burn the garlic while I'm cooking the shrimp, as I will be cooking the shrimp at a higher temperature. Okay, turning the pan back on, and we're going to now turn the heat up to medium, adding two tablespoons of olive oil. And we're gonna start coating our shrimp, maybe half at a time. Okay, hey, I'm gonna place them. We don't want them overcrowding, so we're just gonna place them in here, maybe half at a time, half a batch. We're gonna cook them for about one to two minutes on each side. And if you're using shell on, same thing. Okay, flipping them over. You can see the crispiness of the coating and that will hold the garlic butter. I'm gonna season with some Alea sea salt. Turn off the heat. I don't want it to burn while I remove the shrimp before doing the next batch. Turning the heat back on, getting the next batch going. It looks like I need a little bit more oil, so I'm just gonna add a little bit. Okay, 
Okay, flipping them over. Okay, I'm going to put the rest of the shrimp back in. I forgot to season with the salt. All together about a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon of sea salt. And now it's going to go in all the butter and garlic. Just for another minute, toss it around. Turn off your heat, and that is it. Oh my Leave gosh. Leave no garlic and butter behind. <laughs> So while in Hawaii, of course, I had to go find some sea salt. And I found that this particular one is what's often used, I believe, in uh, their local recipes. And so that's what I picked up. All right. Because these shrimps are so big, you only get six, dude. Oh, man. But look, I will give you some butter garlic over your rice. Yes, please. Or garlic butter, butter garlic. Mm. Same thing. You ready? Why are you frowning? <laughs> ready? Yeah. <laughs>